Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for AWS, Amazon Web Services, reInvent 2016, their annual user developer now, enterprise customer conference, 32,000 people here. Center of the tech universe this week as Amazon um, releases their next truckload of content. Literally a truck came on stage. Great three days of Walls World Cups. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Our next guest is Jeff Aiden. He's the founder and EVP of Marketing Strategic Business Development at Second Watch. Been an alumni of reInvent since the beginning and your customer, John Bruitt, technical manager, Covanta, and Jeff Singer, associate director, cloud engineering. Um, got your customers here, Second Watch. You've been here from the beginning. You've seen the evolution. I mean, you're a believer early on, so it's not like this is new to you. So, but you're seeing the growth. You're rising with the tide. You got some customers here. First question before we jump into some of the use case. Take a minute to talk about what you guys do and how's this show evolved with you guys growing? Yeah, well, I'll start. So Second Watch has been here, uh, this is our fifth year, obviously, at reInvent, and things have changed. One thing that hasn't is the innovation, or the rate of innovation with AWS. Um, I remember back at the first one, there were 6,000 people, all partners, customers, and Amazon employees all stayed in this hotel, and there were no lines to get anywhere. Uh, you know, the center of the conversation was, when are companies going to migrate? When are they going to close down entire data centers? as these products rolled out. Sure enough, a few years later we saw that. Um, us at Second Watch, what we do is we help companies uh, design, deploy, and then manage public cloud solutions. So think of it as not just a bunch of Legos, but kind of an in solution that then is managed. And then we help companies evolve those kind of into the next gen of what cloud services would be. Uh, in that we work with primarily enterprise customers um, a lot of your traditional retail manufacturer type customers, um, as well as more especially business services. And, and well, you guys had some big name customers. We've seen that the past couple of years here with theCUBE. Um, talk about your customers now. What are you guys doing? Um, what's the solution? Well, how do you guys work together? Why are you guys here? Why are we, what are we talking about? Take that one. Yeah, so, uh, Covana decided uh, middle, early of last year to go all in with AWS and um, it, you know, as a process, it took about four months for us to determine which cloud platform we wanted to go with. Um, after that time, AWS was the clear solution, um, and we needed to find a partner that was the right one for us to help us get there. Uh, we're a fairly small IT shop, and so we needed somebody that truly knew the AWS platform. Second Watch easily provided that, that service for us. See, it, mind if I jump in here? Absolutely. Typically, you know, there's been kind of this FUD out there that IT groups are resistant to the cloud. You know, that, that there's concern. It's, it's actually not what we it's found. It's their boss. Well, <laughs> it's, in some cases, but He's actually, smiling. actually what we found in a lot of cases, boss? No. It, it's really, these guys have very important day jobs today running their current infrastructure. So they're subject matter experts around compute storage. So it's not a matter of IT being resistant. Oftentimes it's a matter of do you have enough resources to be able to spend time understanding the rate of innovation that Amazon's at and then how to apply it to your business. So a lot of times companies like these uh, will employ the help of a partner as they are making this transition Then obviously like they're here yeah. to gain learning and expertise around the product and then they start to be evolved in the in you know, the evolve of the application as well. You know, I completely agree with you. I think there's so much dogma around pigeonholing IT to be like dogmatic like the mainframe guys were. And there, there are guys like that that clutch onto their job, maybe have job insecurity, but there's, they wouldn't have the growth of numbers here. Most IT guys now that, they want to get their hands on cool stuff, right? They want to, they want to like get down and dirty and like drive value, from my experience. It's always going to be- They want to do interesting things. It's always going to be- They want to be excited. Yeah, so cloud is certainly catnip for that. I mean, it's like definitely go nuts with that with the cloud. So I got to ask you guys. Um, you mentioned before we came on that you guys did um, you had 400 instances of servers moved to the cloud, 40 apps in 16 weeks. Now let's just kind of put kind of our time machine, you know, hot tub time machine. Now go back to the 80s. Imagine 1986, going in and saying you got 16 weeks. You couldn't move a router in 16 weeks from one building 
across the street. It'd be like a migration plan, right? Now you guys move on a complete sets of resources in 16 weeks. Take us through that use case. Oh man, uh, so this was, uh, this was a really big, uh, it, it, it was a big project for us. You know, we really, we were really looking at the different, uh, the different, the different providers out there, and it was really important that we chose the right one. So that was that was a big thing. We really wanted to make sure that the company, um, had, that, that the department really had the right had agility, um, in, and that was kind of what what led us towards this uh, this this path down to the cloud. Um, we had been looking at others. We had been working with other SaaS solutions before, and said, you know what. Um, having this physical data, this physical data center really isn't doing us any good, um, and uh, that's why we started moving into that. And so, what was the key, key decision point? Cost? Was it just hassle? Um, time? Too much time managing it? Or I mean, there was a lot of time that we were spending a lot of time managing our data center. There was uh, we have uh, we had about five or six people whose full time job was to yep. just run the, run the data center, worry about the cooling, um, you know, energy responding to alerts. Um, and also, we, you know, after crunching the numbers, we found there to be a pretty considerable cost savings. Uh, and that was, uh, that was really what helped us sell the business case. So what do you guys do with, with Second Watch? What's their role with you guys? Uh, Second Watch was, uh, was, was really, the, uh, one of, they're part of the, the team that helped figure out, they kind of architecting the, the new environment with, uh, with Amazon. Um, we, uh, we, you know, three of us all worked together to come up with the right design and, uh, Second Watch was, uh, was the company that really helped us move, move that forward. John, I want to ask you the, the DevOps question because sure. this always comes in. You got to engineer this stuff, so you <laughs> probably rolls right to you. Yeah. When you look at that kind of task, when you look at the cloud migration, how hard is it? Give us a kind of sense for how, what's involved um, and what the trade-offs are as you guys look at engineering, and how do you see the upside as an engineer? Sure, well so Amazon gives, and really most cloud providers, give a unique ability to deploy at speed, you know? Um, a lot of IT shops have a hard time doing things quickly when they're doing it in their own data center, whether that be because of procurement, because of process automation, whatever it be. Um, going to a cloud provider, especially like Amazon, they've got a huge breadth of services and they make getting there fairly simple. Um, you know, again, like you mentioned, we were able to move 400 servers in 16 weeks. It's a monumental effort. It took a lot of doing. There was a lot of late nights, but with the help of a good partner and, and some of that hard work, um, you know, we were able to get it done. And then once you're up there, the ability to improve process quickly is really the story. I got to ask you the question because this was on everyone's mind. I won't say Johnny come lay lease to the cloud, but there's a lot of pressure coming in. You see new practices. You've been doing this for a while at Second Watch. When you do selection of partners, what do you look for? I mean, what are some of the key criteria that you say, hey, um, they're kind of cool and smart, but they're new, or they're cool and smart, but don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, people are coming in, so there's a lot more service providers coming into the cloud. How yeah. do you select the best? For, for us, we looked for a partner that did, specifically did what we were looking to do, which is basically shut down our data center. Um, and, Second Watch had just completed a successful uh, similar migration with Condé Nast that was very publicly uh, out there. And so, it, you know, having a, having a partner that, that is aligned with your strategy and how you want to do it and can show a proven track record is probably the most important point. So track record's key. Yeah. Obviously they have the chops, so you, that's table stakes, so you kind of like look at what they got, talent, sure. but then track record. I got to ask you on, on this, as you look at the landscape, what are some of the track record things that you've seen, you've seen multiple times you've done this, what are some of the, as a cloud service provider and managed provider, what are some of the key things that you guys focus on as a business to stay relevant and stay ahead? Obviously knocking down some use cases is good, but as you go down and look at this growth, yeah. No, it's a great question. Uh, you know, we're very much aligned with Amazon around the customer. The customer really drives where our business goes, and it also drives kind of how we view the business. So if we take care of their customer, our business is going to do well. Um, you know, there generally is a shortage of talent when it comes to understanding cloud services. A few years ago, there were 7,500 SKUs with Amazon. There's over 30,000 SKUs today. So you're asking somebody that has to run a data center today in their off hours to learn Amazon, it's difficult. So partners are needed. 
reputation as well as a lot of certifications are important for us to not only work with great clients like these guys, but also to attract and retain talent. And so yes, there's a lot of companies coming in, um, which is natural, some of it's op opportunistic, some of it's technology driven. Uh, but you know, our customers, which we have over 24 public ca case studies, and a lot behind that that aren't public, talk to these guys on reference calls, are able to articulate the value, as well as tell them what we do really, really well and what we don't do well, or what we don't engage in. Yep. You know, we don't engage in broad brush business consulting. We don't rewrite apps for three to four years. Again, one of the things that these, uh, this company benefited, like a lot of customers, is you get an initial savings from lift and shift. At that point, you again can look at optimization. So how do you functionally optimize it? Is it running on the right size instance? Is it running on the right class instance? Then how do you look at financial so optimization? Just, just to yeah. pause there for a second. So you're saying the sequence is lift and shift, do that extremely well, then once it's operational, then you kind of make sure Without it's, a doubt. then you go, is that the order operation? With it, so again, we're a unique company. A lot of companies approach this from the application layer. I want to make a lot of money rewriting your application. Condé Nast is a great example. PeopleSoft application lifted and shifted. 40 business line applications lifted and shifted. A lot Microsoft, Linux, I mean it's a wide variety. In some cases Oracle. So it depends. And, and so what you're able to do is to lift and shift and if you architect it properly, you're going to get a 30 to 60% savings just from that lift and shift. Okay, without spending the time. I mean, 16 weeks, you couldn't set up a data center from oh, ordering know. to delivery. Uh, so, yeah, so amazing, a amazing lot of numbers. companies don't view it that way. And then once we get it up and running, you're able to say, hey, here's some applications that you can actually change the class or you can change the size and use auto scaling and optimize it from a technical standpoint because you want to be able to see how that runs when you're up there. Then once you get to kind of, I don't want to call it a steady state, but you understand how the environment and workloads are working, you then can start to say, how can I financially optimize that? And then the, the last step, as we're starting to talk at this reInvent, as we're starting to see with these new products, is how do I evolve it? So how do I, am I using not just the best class, am I using the best cloud service product to really evolve this to where either I reduce my management costs, I reduce my downtime, I increase my performance. Yeah. I really make it hum, if you would. So guys, so on your end, right, what's next for you guys? Because now the, the, you're moved to the cloud, so you, did you do the lift and shift, everything's complete, so no more data center, or is there still some remnant data now center yeah, hanging now, around? Now we've got some uh, leftover, leftover systems that we're cleaning up, um, but for, for our, our, our cloud data center, um, I think what Jeff described really kind of really covers like what, what, what our plans are moving forward. You know, for, we want to get into the financial optimization of the, of the environment. We want to get into the technical you know, optimization of the, of the environment. And then once we're, once we're there, we can really take advantage of all the new services that are available. Are you us. guys happy? Are you happy with the situation right now? Oh yeah. Yeah, on Very. the engineering side? Yeah. Okay, so what, what do you, when you look at this landscape of what they just dropped in, a truckload, literally, well that was a, that was snowmobile, but truck on stage was pretty impressive. Yeah. And a truck on stage, a tractor, tractor trailer truck. As an engineer, what's going through your head when you're at the keynote? I mean, are you like envisioning like how you're going to engineer the stuff? What's next for you guys now that you've moved to the cloud? Yeah, so every time they release a new product or a new innovation on what you would think of as being you know, some old school process and, and you immediately start thinking, oh my gosh, I have XYZ application that needs to be replaced by that starting tomorrow, right, because they, they almost seem to always be a step ahead of the next thing you need to be doing, right? So, and, and so it's nice to see that they continually are able to innovate and add more features that we can immediately see value in, in moving Great. to. And then managing it, it's a breeze, you focus on the business issues. What are those now? Are you guys just playing cards? I mean, what are you guys doing at the office? You know, now, <laughs> So you know, one of the, one of the, you know, the important things that we get, we have, we need to get to really make sure our team is up to speed. Has they they have the skills, they have the understanding. Um, it's not just on the, it's it's pretty much across the department as a whole. So we're trying to we're we're, we're trying to like tool everybody up so that they understand what's going on. Um, and then also we need to be able to market this stuff and and yeah. reach out to our business teams to make sure that they understand. So you're doing more business have. evaluation. You're involved more in less mundane hassle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, the hassle that's, goes away. That's where that's where we want that's where we want to be. Yeah, you know, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're definitely moving towards that direction. That's the big joke I say, to my friends. You're not just you're not playing cards. You're actually working on some other cooler stuff. When you get that 
That's a lot of well, the way. And what's great about this conference, I mean, they may not use the, the you know, snowmobile truck that came on stage, but as they start to think about their business and their mission, you know, energy conservation and think about how can we use machine learning or deep learning yeah. or IoT to really help contribute globally, not just yeah. within the business, but how do we work as a business to you know, help the entire yeah. world to be a better place? And ultimately, you know, technology like AWS is allowing us to do it's it a, faster, a, cheaper, and with less environmental impact. I mean, it's a huge power source, not just for resource, but also powerful as a company. I'm an operating system guy, so that's my background. I look at what they're doing, I'm like, oh my God, I could, I could build some serious, because you know, you're talking about stuff, that's like, okay, great, it's been vetted, push a button. I'm not a plumber, I'm a machinist now. I'm just connecting and, and building out. And I think that is something that people overlook, that that will shift the value and so this is why I think you guys got a good thing going on here with the, you know, that the integration, getting the data centers out. I mean, just the power cost alone. I mean, think about like, yeah. I mean, that must be a big one for you, like the power. I mean, is that the big issue? Well, it, or is it more of cost than just hassle? Too many it's hassles. It's not just power. I mean, what we've heard were companies like them, Connie and NAS is a great example. I don't have to go to lunch with all my reps that are selling me hardware. <laughs> that alone they freed up. They lose the golf outing, so come on. That alone freed up the time. I mean, so there's multiple benefits, both <laughs> work and life balance. They're trimmer. moving to the cloud. They're trimmer, and, they're in shape. <laughs> and you know, you can sit on a plane and actually provision yeah. instances and use products, which you could never do in the physical world. So your yeah. work-life balance should get better by moving to the cloud. Yeah, I just think it's just so much cool. Hassles, get rid of the hassles, make life better. Uh, and, and, and work on some better stuff. Jeff, thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Congratulations on all your success. You. Uh, we'll see you next year. Guys, congratulations on moving the, the big workloads and in, in infrastructure to the cloud, and uh, see you next year. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming on the Cube. This is the Cube. I'm John Furrier, live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent 2016. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>